Okay, now this will be the last part to the Cuban Missile Crisis um, regarding the resolution of the crisis and how it ended and uh, what are the actually the factors that led to the resolution of this crisis. Um, I think I should be able to finish this in uh, one lecture and this would be more of um, I think it will be more of a SEQ kind of part of the chapter rather than a SBQ one or at least I haven't seen any that is being tested on this now but still doesn't mean to say that you can take my word for it okay now the factors leading to the resolution of the crisis okay we're looking at primarily two reasons cooperation between Kennedy and Khrushchev as well as public and international opinion okay cooperation between Kennedy and Khrushchev now it was resolved uh, because mainly that there was time allowed on both sides to cool down and consider their responses and both of them actually understood each other's concerns and they are aware that if a nuclear war is to break up both sides actually lose because you know they are all going to die so therefore this actually led them to learn how to be able to cooperate with one another and to try to avoid the war from breaking out now um, a more detailed explanation can be found inside the textbook on page 102 and uh, it would also tell you that they recognize each other's um, they recognize each other's concerns personal concerns and allow for a face saving way out now if you think about it it's really quite stupid because well um, the only concern that they should have is not really about their face but about the impending nuclear war that breaks out yeah, if the nuclear war breaks out both countries are destroyed what kind of face would you still have left to save for yourself because there's no more people left to support you right so if you think of it that way well that's quite stupid but nevertheless it is still one of the factors that actually allow them to uh, resolve these crises peacefully okay and uh, because of that Khrushchev that, that is also why Khrushchev actually agreed to uh, have the missiles removed only six months later think about it okay it doesn't this doesn't benefit chef in any way okay, it really doesn't and they asked to remove the missiles six months later Khrushchev could have demanded and say no I want the missiles in Turkey to be removed now why do I have to wait six months later so therefore um, it is actually really Khrushchev understanding what is Kennedy's concerns here and allowing for that to happen and that's why the crisis was allowed to be resolved peacefully so the factor of um, Kennedy and Khrushchev is really actually quite important in allowing for this to happen okay um, time was allowed for both sides to cool down and consider the responses this can be seen in the throughout the entire crisis of 13 days when the actions were far and few in between okay it's not to say like every day there was something happening they took like six days before they decided that they wanted to do a naval blockade and during these six days there was no action on the part of Khrushchev or serious action on the part of Kennedy they were just simply considering what is their next step and giving time to cool down and as to quotes uh, the movie right okay they mentioned that hopefully cooler heads will prevail and it did because of the you know after some time to consider um, so this actually these are some of the factors that actually led to the resolution of the crisis Okay, now the next one, this will be in more detail, public and international opinion. Um, international opinion, uh, the Europeans, they felt that USA react, overreacted. They have been living within a range of nuclear missiles for a year, and uh, for years, and uh, China and Cuba were actually prepared to support the Soviet Union in, the invasion, in an invasion of uh, USA. And UN... Secretary General and the Pope acted as mediators between USA and Soviet Union. This tells us that the international opinion were not favorable to the crisis, to the crisis breaking out potentially into a nuclear war. Okay, the international opinion is that nobody wants to die, nobody wants to have content, to have to contend with a nuclear war, and the public opinion is that the American citizens were actually urging Kennedy to be careful in handling the crisis because they are going to be the ones who suffer from the crisis if a nuclear war were to break out. Soviet Union, um, the people there, they view the crisis as another possible war. There's not much reaction or not much information that we have regarding what is actually their reaction this whole thing, you know, because being communist, they probably didn't really bother much about the people's opinion back then as well. Okay. 
Alright, okay, so these are the two factors that actually led to the resolution of the crisis. Uh, public opinion, public and international opinion, and factors leading to the resolution of the crisis. More details can be found in the textbook. For example, the British Prime Minister, even though publicly supported the blockade, the naval blockade, eh, privately he urged President Kennedy to exercise more caution because he felt that the Americans had overreacted. And he said that, you know, this is not worth pushing the world to a brink of a nuclear war. And that is why he privately told Kennedy to be more careful. Right now, aftermath of the crisis, we look at the implications for the three different groups of people in the play, USA, Soviet Union and Cuba. Uh, establish establishment of the Moscow-Washington hotline, the first steps towards nuclear disarmament. The first implication for, alright, immediately after the crisis, okay, this is where the SBQ will test on uh, who's the winner, USA, Soviet Union, or even Cuba as well, right? So USA was seen as courageous for standing up the Khrushchev because at that point in time, again, this would be time sensitive, at that point in time when the crisis ended, they would appear to the, uh, to the world, uh, to the public, okay, because they actually managed to successfully avert the nuclear crisis only at the expense of promising not to invade Cuba. That's all. They didn't, the rest of the world didn't know about the deal, the secret deal with the missiles in Turkey. Uh, the US allies, however, they were not too pleased with this removal of missiles from Turkey only after that. Okay, so immediately at that point in time, USA is seen as the victors, but of course six months later, once the missiles were removed from Turkey, the allies were actually not too pleased with that. Okay? And USA, they had to accept a communist state in its backyard, in Cuba, right at its doorstep. Okay, for Khrushchev, he was seen as being weak in dealing with uh, the USA. So therefore, in many of the sources, you will see that he needed to justify himself. Okay, when he's speaking to the Soviet Parliament, he needed to justify his decision. Uh, with regards to this, Cuba, um, he felt betrayed as he was not involved in the negotiations at all times, and they just simply had to contend with what Soviet Union directed them to be doing. Relationship with China broke down because China saw it as uh, Soviet Union being weak. And however, the only victory that they managed to achieve was that missile threat in Turkey was removed. And so, if you come from the point of view that Khrushchev, his primary objective, if it was not to defend Cuba, his primary objective, however, it was to get the missiles removed, he managed to achieve it. And from that point of view, then he would be the winner then again. Okay? For Cuba, he managed to actually be protected from a possible US invasion, even though they lost the nuclear protection from uh, Soviet Union. So with that, they actually it would appear to be a winner and Castro would be seen as a national hero and he has reigned all the way even up to today, still alive and um, and uh, and he has passed on his power over to his brother Raul Castro. Now the last impact is the, not sorry, last impact, the second last impact Establishment of the Moscow-Washington hotline. Now remember that uh, Khrushchev and Kennedy throughout the entire crisis there was not much communication until the first letter sent by Khrushchev to Kennedy. And so after this they realized that they needed a phone line to each other so that you know in crucial times it was necessary to have a reliable and quick line of communication. Like Khrushchev can ask Kennedy or the leader of Soviet Union can ask you know leader of USA, hey, what are you doing? And then at least clarify things before assuming and trying to guess what the other party is trying to do. Okay. So therefore, this uh, Moscow-Washington uh, hotline, this impact is rather great because it provides this uh, direct and confidential communication between them that will prevent another potential crisis of this sort from happening. And the last one, all right, uh, this actually is the first steps towards nuclear disarmament. After possible nuclear war, both superpowers decided to limit the development of nuclear weapons. However, this is still not that fantastic, but it's the first step. So the first thing that happened was the August 1963 when they signed this uh, nucle limited test ban treaty, which prohibited nuclear testing except testing conduct underground. So therefore, right, it doesn't really actually cut down on the number of nuclear weapons, but what it does do is to prevent them from testing uh, even more weapons. Lah. Why would they need to test? Because they want to continually improve on their nuclear weapons, and they will need to test them in order to find out if their nuclear weapon would be a better one, right? So this test ban limited, lah, limited test ban treaty prohibited testing uh, on the grounds except for underground. 
So basically, you know, it was attempting to slow down the arms race, lah. Slow down, but seriously, the number of nuclear weapons is still a lot, and a nuclear crisis can still break break out. But the point here is that it's still a baby steps towards the um cutting down of nuclear disarmament, lah. We will learn more about the nuclear disarmament in uh end of Cold War. We look at the various uh treaties that were being signed to really try to cut down on the number of nuclear weapons. Okay, so this we would say that is a first step, even though it isn't that significant. Uh, but it is a first step towards nuclear disarmament. Okay, and that concludes the end of uh the. Lectures on Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, and before I end, let's move on to SEQ to take a look at what are some of the possible questions. Okay, so I have discussed some of it. Like for example, the first one was responsible for increasing tensions. Uh, yeah, during the crisis, you will need to make sure that you read the question carefully. This one will be more on impact. Okay, Cuban Missile Crisis was a boon. Boon meaning to say that it's a good thing. So how is it a good thing and for who was it a good thing for? Right. Um. Let's see. Khrushchev was the one who ended the Cuban Missile Crisis. This kind of question is obviously the answer would be no la. And of course, in as usual, you would always have to write yes and no. So therefore, you need to discuss what did Kennedy do as well as what did Khrushchev do or what were the other factors who actually helped to end the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. Uh, Cuban Missile Crisis made the world a safer place. Um, uh, seems like a very straightforward, well, not really a very straightforward question, but you can argue it yes and no, but this one would take a lot of explanation, and your explanations need to be very clear in explaining how does it actually make the world a safer place, and how does it actually not make the world a safer place. Okay, the more obvious answer would be like, they made the world a safer place because people were now afraid of uh, starting a nuclear war after they see the implication of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, but the more or less un indirect answer about making the world not a safer place, um, that one would need some arguing. Some arguing. For example, you can make use of the factor that was discussed just now about the disarmament. Argue that it didn't actually make the world a safer place at all steps taken towards this armament was still very very limited right okay so um, these are some of the questions look at them think about them if you have questions please um, let me know and this ends the Cuban missile crisis here